with Sandra Sully. Good evening. The New South Wales Coalition remains intact and in government tonight after high-stakes negotiations between the Premier and her deputy. Nationals leader John Barillaro is bizarrely claiming victory, but according to his Liberal colleagues, the Deputy Premier has been embarrassed and achieved nothing. In the back seat and on the back foot, after an ultimatum from the Premier, there were no smiles as John Barillaro arrived at the government offices. But four hours later... Great day, mate. Great day. Great result. It was more than a macchiato putting a pep in his step. Today's a win for the, uh, for the, for the regions. It's a win for farmers. The Nationals leader says yesterday's threat to stall government business and to boycott meetings with the Liberals has delivered. Their grievances with existing koala habitat protection guidelines will be discussed at State Cabinet and the public is now more aware of the issues. We're now confident that it'll come to Cabinet sooner than what we thought will end up and that's the compromise. We made a compromise about when. She's made a compromise about it becoming an, an agenda item. But senior Liberals say the Premier made no such compromise, suggesting the issue was already on the agenda for a meeting on October 6. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. A point seemingly confirmed by these comments on Tuesday. There are scheduled cabinet meetings and of course that issue will be discussed at a scheduled cabinet meeting. This will be dealt with at one of those scheduled cabinet meetings. The Nationals complain it has been removed from agendas previously. While John Barillaro denies he's backed down, his so-called friends in the Liberal Party say that's exactly what happened, claiming that when he leaves these government offices today, he would have achieved nothing in the past 24 hours except provide an unwanted distraction. It's been a difficult 24 to 48 hours. It's been a distraction for the government. We shouldn't have distractions like these. The people of New South Wales uh, expect better. You can't threaten the government like he did uh, and then get away with it. His position is now untenable. I can't see how any government can survive with this level of dysfunction in it. The Premier didn't address the media today, but in an effort to show she's focused on the pandemic and not the sickness in the coalition, the government did release these pictures of her meeting with Victorian health officials. Well, state political reporter Lachlan Kennedy joins me now. Lachlan, so what does this mean for John Barillaro's future as the Nationals leader? Well, Sandra, if you ask the Liberal Police Minister, he has to go right now. David Elliott, speaking in Dubbo today, said, quote, what we've seen from John Barillaro is the greatest act of political bastardry in quite some time, and I think the disloyalty we've seen from the Deputy Premier makes his position untenable. He went on to go and say that if you go up against Gladys Berejiklian, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. But, of course, when it comes to who leads the Nationals, the Liberals have no say in that. That is a matter for for the National Party and John Barillaro has said several times he was not acting alone, he was acting on the will of his party and last night during a meeting he did offer to resign but his MPs backed him in 100% he said. It should be noted though that John Barillaro has threatened to quit and rip up the coalition agreement several times during his time here in Parliament. Well that political capital, that trick is gone because Gladys Berejiklian has called his bluff once and for all. He's made a commitment the coalition will stay together until the next election. Interestingly, on that point, Sandra, John Barillaro had said he wouldn't contest the next state election. Now he's saying he'll make a decision about his political future sometime next year. Watch this space. Lachlan Kennedy, thank you. Australian batsman Usman Kawa